About two years ago, I overcame a challenge that held me back for a while. I learned to touch type. Since then, it has become my main way of typing and I have never looked back. So this video is going to be about the perks that I've seen from learning to touch type, how that journey has been so far, and why after putting so much time and effort into touch typing, why I've given up practicing, and why maybe you should too. To understand where I am, I'll need to go back to where I initially learned. In June 2020, COVID had just happened and things were all shutting down. Suddenly, I was in an online university instead of the in-person one that I was used to. That meant that my pen and notebook were useless and I needed to learn how to type properly. So I saw that period as an opportunity to increase my productivity and efficiency while typing. So I committed to doing five one-hour sessions a week until I learned to type without looking at the keys. And after two months of time and effort and frustration, I was finally done and I was thrilled. Since learning, the perks have been incredible. I've been able to write things down without needing to look, which has helped me in meetings and in classes and even on the bus. It's also made typing a lot more natural to me and it's one less barrier in front of me doing work for a job or for a school assignment. Plus, I can now type while looking people directly in the eye, which I would admit is a weird one, but I kind of like freaking them out. Hey, do you want to see what I wrote? I'd say that's pretty good advice. It also taught me a bunch of really valuable lessons about life. The first is in self-doubt. Before I had learned to touch type, just knowing how to type without looking at the keys seemed so far away. It looked almost impossible. But through practicing and doing every session, bit by bit, that felt a little more doable until I finally learned the skill. And it got me thinking, if that's the case for touch typing, it's probably the case for any other skill or goal that I'm trying to achieve. When I put effort into it, or when I start, it's gonna be a lot easier than I thought it would be. And since then, that has precisely turned out to be the case. To illustrate my next lesson, I wanna show you all something that you've probably been waiting for watching this video. And that is my current typing speed. Now for context, here is how good I was at typing two years ago. And this is how good I am at typing now. So I'm just gonna use a site called typingtest.com to get a baseline, and it should give me a general sense of what my words per minute are. As you can see, 62 words per minute isn't anywhere near the 100 or 140 words per minute people normally post about. And that's okay, because I don't want to type that fast. The goal for me was always to just improve my efficiency in work. So going from hunting and pecking at keys to learning touch typing was a monumental shift in that. And once I had that shift, I felt like I didn't need to learn anymore. So I stopped practicing. The next reason is because a lot of the work that I do require brainstorming. And it turns out that typing is not the fastest way to do that. It's speaking. Specifically, talking to my laptop. Basically, I just turn on the voice to text and I can do whatever I want. I can walk around, I can sit on the bed, I can lie down, and I basically just speak all the thoughts in my head and get it onto the page. Then I go back in using Grammarly and some of my typing skills to then rearrange that. And there it is, so much easier and with almost no typing needed. So that takes us to the most important lesson that I learned from all this. That self-improvement for self-improvement's sake is not the smartest way to go about your life. You need to have a clear reason and you also need to be flexible. My reason was to greatly improve the speed at which I do work, not to reach some arbitrary words per minute number. And when I found software that could do that for me, I was flexible and I changed to it. And as a result, I found my solution in a much easier way. I think that's a principle that a lot of us would do well in remembering and keeping in our own lives. Sometimes the path that you think you need to get to your goal isn't the one that you need to follow. In the future, I still plan to use touch typing in my day to day and even plan to increase my words per minute, but there is no need to overdo it. Maybe I'll never reach 100 words per minute. Maybe I'll always be stuck writing at average speed and talking to my computer, but I think I'm okay with that. Also, sometimes it's not about how fast you type that impresses people, but what you type. And one of the best ways to do that is through email. So you can click right here to learn all about how to craft the perfect email. And trust me, this is a skill you might need because not a lot of people know how to do it correctly. And if you're interested in learning how I started touch typing in the first place, you can click this video right here. Now that's all that I got for you today. As always, my name is Isaiah, and I hope that you keep improving. I'll see you next time.